Hello, welcome to a new video here on the Ludwig Fusel channel. Uh, I decided to do a follow-up video on the uh, three plant videos on threading, multi-threading in C++. Well, there were planned at three videos, now there are four. Uh, it's just because I actually didn't uh, wanted to go into too much detail on Linux threads, but well, uh, I decided to that I should do this because, well, my channel is mainly orientated for like uh, graphic and game programming, which means mainly Windows guys, but the thing is, uh, like, when you're using Windows, you can write for Xbox and Windows, obviously, because Microsoft and both of them are running Windows, even the Xbox is running a kind of um, special distribution of Windows, while the PlayStation is, far as I know, running a special distribution of Linux, or better to say, Unix, and this means that threading on Linux is the same as threading on a PlayStation, uh, same probably also on a Switch, I don't know how the Switch is built internally, but it's probably also kind of like a Linux or a Unix based system. So, uh, yeah, it's probably all uh, P thread. I mean, on PlayStation, I've read a book that actually stated that PlayStation is P thread. So, yeah, we are going to take a look at P thread today and uh, basically threading at Linux. Yeah, we're gonna go for this road and we're just gonna have a virtual machine. I already prepared a fresh Ubuntu install. I mean, it's not fresh because I already did a little p-thread example there. Uh, but yeah, uh, just some, some, some Ubuntu stuff here. It should boot up very quickly. Uh, yeah, there you can see Ubuntu is now starting. And we're gonna do some p-thread here today. Alright, so basically P3 has the same ideas as Windows, the function names are just different and they function a bit different, haha, <laughs> yeah. Alright, so there we are at our uh, nice and friendly Linux machine, uh, so let's get the terminal up and all uh, up and running, we just need the terminal, we're not going to use any fancy GUI, everything is being concluded in the terminal. Can I actually zoom in in the terminal some way? Uh, yeah, I like plus, plus, go plus, ah. I'm pressing on plus and it's increasing, but it's... Oh, I mean... Okay, I know what. Uh, probably, like, on preferences. No? All right, then I'm just gonna plus until I think we are good. I think this should be good for YouTube. All right. Uh, yeah. So, uh, let's first list our directories. Let's go to our documents because, well, code is obviously a document. Um, I have a folder dev in there, so I'm gonna go into the dev folder. And now I'm gonna creating a directory and I'm gonna call this p... A thread tutorial. I'm gonna go to that by going to cd uh, p thread tutorial there. And if I now list the content, you'll see nothing because we don't have anything. But we need two files. We're gonna need a build .sh, so a build file that is gonna build our application. I mean, we could write a make file, but we're just gonna write a plain build file. I am gonna, don't wanna go into making a make tutorial now. So I'm gonna create a build file and I'm gonna create a cpp file. So main.cpp and, oh, I mistyped there. Uh, this was so clean until now, but no, it's not clean. Okay, uh, yeah. Um, so we have now a main file and a, a build file. First of all, we need to actually alter this build file so that we can execute this. Uh, this is done by calling uh, the hmod command by adding the execution, plus x for execution, plus for adding x for execution. And I'm gonna add this to the build file, so build.sh. Now I can actually edit the build file, or I could edit it before as well, but it wouldn't like be good. Now, if you wonder, we have these two files here. So I'm gonna go and use nano, and I'm gonna nano into this build file to write uh, the build command. We're gonna use G++, so I'm typing G++, and to use threads, I'm gonna say pthread, which basically uh, adds threads to the compilation process, so p stash pthread just means add threads to the project. Input file is main.cpp, and out file will be the uh, thread test. All right, after we have run this uh, build command, I'm gonna uh, execute the application automatically. So, the test, I mean, like, my, I mean, the file is called build and it's now also running that, which is not ideal, but uh, for this tutorial, this should be definitely good. So, g++ pthread main.cpp minus o for output thread test. And then we're gonna execute in the same directory test. So, I'm gonna exit and save here. Uh, and now if we are gonna um, type in dot slash build, we will get an issue. 
uh, that we can't really find main. So undefined reference to main because our main so cpp file doesn't have a main function. And then we see that no such file or directory because thread test was not generated. If you take a look at this, yes, no output file was generated because our main was invalid. So let's go inside our main.cpp and what we're gonna do is we're gonna include uh, stdio here for input and output. We're gonna write our main function, uh, just a very basic main and let's actually like follow the C++ conventions, what I'm trying to do the late, the lately, I mean, you know that I tend to do this like that. I am not quite convinced if I'm gonna keep the default C++ conventions. I mean, it has advantages at some point, but uh, I can't really can't, uh, well, in general, I cannot really see the point of tape. putting the brackets like they are like in, like they should be done like in C++, but yeah. Uh, I'm gonna try this out and then I'm gonna have a conclusion if I'm gonna keep this or not gonna keep this. Uh, all right, so let's do a simple test. Hello world just to simply show you that everything is working And of course, you know that we don't need a return in there or at least I hope that DCC is not complaining, but yeah And let's do a build uh, ich, I have mistyped the CD. That's always good as T What? Oh, it's IO stream SCD. I always I think some old C header. Uh, of course, it's this uh, IO stream. Uh, now we should be good. Yeah, there we are. It does build everything correctly, and we get our hello world message. All right. Uh, now let's use pthread, and the header is called uh, pthread.h. But probably we're not gonna need this, but we're gonna include it anyways. So hashtag include p. Uh, thread.h to get the header. I think I already did a test where everything worked without including pthread, but you should always include your stuff. Alright, so uh, we're gonna just do some very quick pthreading here. So the first step will be uh, create the thread. Then we're gonna wait for the Thread. Um, it's actually quite laggy because I'm using OBS. This has some issues, uh, sadly. Not in Visual Studio, but like in any other I.O. application because it's like virtual host. It's like a bit, yeah, a bit laggy here now. I'm hoping to apologize for the typing issues that arise because I like have a delay of a second until I see the, the, the chart that I'm actually typing. I don't know why OBS is making such bullshit, but yeah. All right, um, to create a P thread, we need kind of like an object to contain the P thread. It's kind of like the thread ID and this object is, or this type is called P thread underscore T. And I'm just calling this uh, TID for thread ID because it's basically just an ID or you could also like argue and handle to the thread just like on Windows. But creation actually works a bit different than on Windows. So to create a thread, we're gonna call uh, P thread create to create a thread and what we want to uh, create and now we need some arguments the first argument is a pointer to our p thread type the second parameter is an actual uh, arguments that specify how the p thread are created but we're not going to using that uh, now then we need the thread main i'm just going to call the function a thread main again it's still currently not in existence but we're going to create this very soon so we need a thread main a function and we need some arguments, and for the arguments, I'm actually gonna cast a value to a thread pointer. So I'm just gonna use a value of A, B, C, D, E, F, just to show you that, yeah, we are having some nice pattern there. And this would basically, or should basically create the P thread and give it as a parameter, the value of that hex value. All right. Now let's create the actual pthread function. The uh, interface of the function is it's returning a void pointer, which is basically the return argument. Um, I called it thread underscore main. And it is also taking a void pointer, an argument. Oh, I'm just gonna call this arg. And then we're just gonna, of course, ah, uh, not that one, that one here, because uh, it's just like a normal function. Uh, now let's do some printing here. I'm doing some C out here, and I'm gonna say, P thread got or P thread arcs and I'm gonna say 0x 
STD hacks, which probably won't work because like there's this IO manip header I think that you need to include, but I'm not quite sure. Uh, for some of these operations you need that IO manipulator header, but yeah, let's see how this is gonna do. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna say pthread arguments and then I'm gonna uh, input my arc here. And then I'm just going some std deck and some std handle to put our uh, C out into normal mode back again. Alright, to wait for a p thread to run, we're gonna uh, call p thread join. Oh, not waiting to run, waiting until it is finished. We are calling p thread uh, join with as the first argument a thread ID. And a second argument, we need a pointer to a pointer because this is gonna contain the return value of the thread. So we're gonna have return underscore value to kind of like get the return value of the thread and this is gonna be null pointer. Why is it not actually highlighting null pointer? Yeah, I don't care. So this is returning null pointer. I mean, it's just nano, so yeah, who cares? Um, yeah, then we need, of course, this pointer to the null pointer to use this, so return value there. And this should wait until the thread is done. And let's alter this output message down here. So we say p, p, or p, thread done and I'm also want to input the arguments here uh, of Chris 0x because this will be hex again std hex return value and std decimal even through this would be a bit pointless here Alright, so to recap what we are doing, of course we are doing something wrong, we need to return from the uh, thread as well, so I want to return Cast it to a void point. I want to return 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And yeah, so basically what we are doing, we are defining a thread main. The signature of a thread main is uh, as an input parameter a void pointer, as an output parameter a void pointer. Input parameters, of course, are arguments that are uh, inputted by thread creation, and the uh, return value will be returned to the uh, parent thread when joining the thread. Uh, creating a thread is done by calling the pthread create function. The pthread create function needs a pointer to a thread handle, which is uh, contained in the type pthread underscore t. Uh, second parameter are some more attributes for starting the thread, which are not going to be handled in this uh, video. I'm just going to show you basic pthreading because I'm not a pthread expert. I'm mainly like a Windows programming guy, but I at least want to show you how, how things are working on the next side. So yeah, uh, then of course as a third parameter you need the thread main itself, so basically the function that should be called by the thread, uh, which of course has the signature already mentioned. And the last and fourth parameter in the uh, pthread create function is the arguments for that thread, avoid pointer. To wait for a thread uh, returning or finishing, you call the pthread join function. The first argument is the thread handle again, so the pthread t-type. And the second argument is a pointer to a void pointer, so a void pointer pointer, uh, which is basically the pointer to the void pointer that is gonna contain the void pointer returned by the thread main. Basically, the thread has finished by or after calling uh, pthread join, so we can obtain the return value. All right, uh, so let's exit that, save all of our modification, and see if this will build. And it will not build because I forgot a semicolon at the thread main. Where is my cursor? There is my cursor. Uh, go there, exactly where the semicolon needs to go, and this should go now. Yeah, it's working. All right, so basically, oh, I see the hex is pre-pending that 0x on Linux? That's interesting. Uh, no, so, uh, it's not doing that on Windows, actually. So I'm gonna get rid of that. Interesting. Hey, I was not aware that Linux is doing that. Never used a CD hacks on Windows uh, on Linux, though. Alright, so let's build this now and uh, see what it's doing. So basically, uh, we get two messages. The first one is pthread arcs, which was, if you remembered uh, correctly, uh, being sent by the thread itself. And basically what you get is an output is ABCDEF, which is exactly what we have used as input arguments to the thread. So we can see that our thread is correctly being called and started and given its arguments. 
And then we got the second message, pthread done, which is basically coming from our main thread after joining on the pthread. So the pthread has finished. And as well, we are getting 0x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, which is exactly what we have inputted. To just show it to you again, here we have the uh, return value, 1 to 9. And here we have the input value, A to F. And you can easily see that everything is working as expected. And well, p threads are not scary and Linux, Linux is itself also not very scary. Actually, the project is faster up and running than on Windows with creating like a project and stuff. Um, yeah, so basically we uh, get this uh, very nice and easily here done on Linux. Uh, I may upload a main file as well, but probably not because it's like very straightforward. I, I can like see these are just a few lines. I'm not gonna upload them to GitHub. Uh, if you wanna have some more advanced insights on uh, peer threads, there is some nice documentation uh, at the uh, Unix specification here, uh, pthread.h which is basically giving you everything that is uh, like available for pthreads like uh, uh, there's some cancel function here or you can do some mutex functions here as well pthread join is for example here or pthread exit to exit the thread detaching threads uh, comparing threads if they are equal canceling threads with the pthread cancel function uh, yeah, so there's actually quite uh, much also to do with pthreads it's a bit more capable than uh, like SCD threads, but not as capable, I would argue, as uh, window threads. But you can get some serious stuff done and it's just writing some basic threading. Should be no issue on Linux as well. So yeah, thank you for watching. You're gonna see us in the uh, next video. Have a nice day. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.